So we're back at the uh, graining sink now, and I have two stones. This is actually one of my students' uh, stones, and they are currently in, a, in, a, in the process of graining it. I think they are at 80 grit right now. Um, and so we'll, we'll do one pass on this, just so you can see. And this is uh, my last stone that I did not too long ago. Um, this is very typical of how you would see a stone before you begin. So we'll, we'll do both of these. We're not gonna go through the whole process, but I'm gonna walk you through a few things. The first thing I wanna do is find a really nice straight edge, something that's a little bit thicker and doesn't wobble a lot. If you have, <clears throat> these yellow ones tend to be pretty good. If you have a uh, paper, um, a paper trimmer that would work well as well. But you just want a nice machined edge on this. And I want to test my stone to see how, how, uh, how even it is and if there's any dips or any raised areas in the stone. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at it and check out the edges. Oftentimes it's higher on the edges, right? Especially when students are using the stones because they're not quite yet used to, to levigating. And so the sides get neglected. Um, also, it's not very rounded. So one of the things that you might want to do before you get started is go around the edges and file. I'll show you how to do that as well. But I just want to look at it and inspect it, inspect it for any fissures that might be occurring or any, um, any mineral deposits. Sometimes mineral deposits can be very subtle and they look like um, cracks. This is something that could eventually crack right here. You can see this this little bit is starting to come off. You can see this edge is pretty sharp so this needs to be um, to be uh, filed down a bit with a rasp. Um, but I don't really see any fissures on this one. Um, this one, this is a unique stone. You can't really see it very well while it's dry, but once we wet it, you'll see it. There's like a pink limestone here and a gray limestone here. So it's a nice kind of uh, d mineral deposits on this. Um, you can still see the ghost image from the image that was last on this stone. Um, so you know that you're done with the 80 grit when your ghost image is gone. But I'm gonna check this, I'm gonna take a piece of paper and go from corner to corner and notice that the paper can freely move. It's not that bad though, if I inspect it closely, I can see that there's really not a, a big gap there. I'm gonna try it from the other corner to corner and see it starts to touch there. That tells me that the sides are a little high and I need to bring those down. Um, next I'll go from the width, same thing. It's just those sides. And then I'll do it again lengthwise and I can feel a little bit of a height there. So that's telling me that it's mostly the, the sides here. Um, it's, it's pretty good here and here, but it's mostly these, these sides. And it might be because it's harder for some people to reach these sides over here. And so it gets to be a little bit different. I'll, you know, a little bit of a uh, neglected on the on the edges. I'm gonna do the same with this one. This one is a little bit tighter, so it's pretty good. Same thing. That's a little bit tight, and it's good here. So really, you know. Um, I'm just gonna work around the edges, try to bring those down a little bit. Now another thing that you should be looking at is, I'm gonna go over to the millimeters here, and I'm gonna, this graining sink is kinda unique. You can see that some of these aren't quite co making contact. They're slightly different heights. So I wanna check and make sure that it's the same width all the way around. And I've already done this, but I'm gonna just lift up on one of the bars on one of the corners, and I'm gonna be looking, and it is 93, or 80, 83 millimeters high. Do the same one, I have to lift this one up a little bit. 83 millimeters. Check this one, yep, I have to raise this one. And this one seems a little bit 
huh this one seems pretty high this one I'm reading this at like 90 or 86 so that is unusual and this one I'm reading at 86 as well so I'm gonna just double check this over here well that's about 85 actually maybe 84 so it looks like there's a little bit of a wedge here so um, so they're gonna have to focus on bringing this down so this is lower than this side so they need to really focus some um, elbow grease getting this lowered down um, it's not that big of a deal if it was thicker on one end than on the other that would cause some issues because when you're running it through the press say this is thicker and this is thinner if my scraper bar comes down on the stone here and it's thicker and I set my pressure it's going to be tight and as the it travels through the press it's going to get lighter and lighter and lighter until I get to the end here and it's relatively light so my image might go from dark to light if I have what would be called a wedge now this is actually kind of lucky that it's higher on this these two sides and not on these two sides because the scraper bar on the press is able to compensate for that when the pressure comes down if there's a little bit of a wedge lengthwise this can compensate for it because it doesn't have to be perfectly straight up and down so they're a little bit lucky there um, but needless to say they're gonna have to over time this side is gonna have to come down because we want this stone to be equal thickness all the way around this is not the most accurate way of doing it we do have calipers but I just prefer to do it on the press you know or on the graining sink like that um, we do have an older levigator um, this is a newer levigator and then we're, we can try using a stone um, but one thing that we'd have to do if you're using a levigator you want to inspect it that the edges are not too uh, sharp and what we would have to do is occasionally take a file and go around the edges and just file down when they get when they start to get a little bit sharper this one you know we could do that as well I'll show you how to do that um, in just a minute so I'm gonna start levigating take off my mask for this I'm actually gonna move this stone out of the way for now and I'm gonna show you a a graining pattern now when these carborundum grits run low and you need to change them out um, we have to be careful that we don't contaminate from one container to another if 80 grit is more car 80 grit is more coarse and we're going to use 80 grit until the image is gone um, 120 grit is the next coarsest 180 and 220 is the finest so we're gonna go through these once you're done with the 80 and your image is gone your your stone is even then you're gonna switch to the 120 and you're gonna do at least three passes with that and then you're gonna switch to the 180 do three more right so you always want to kind of do it at least three passes to get your stone polished and you'll notice I'm not I'm I want to make sure that like all the excess is off of this there is a scooper in each one of these buckets that are labeled and so do not use an 80 grit scooper for 220 grit even even if you think it's clean you don't want to risk it if this runs out I do have more there's another bucket over there and I have some in storage so I'm gonna put that there and now I'm done with this so I'm gonna put the top back on it try and tighten it up a little bit you know make sure that it's on there and put that away um, so I moved this stone over there's a little bit of a gap throughout here and that is to allow the water to run off if, I, if the stone was all the way to the edge the runoff would come onto the 
onto the floor. Now I'm gonna turn this on. Our faucet is a little wonky, so you wanna just be careful with it. Now this has already been grained several times with the 80 grit. I'm just gonna do it once so you can see, and you can see the pattern that I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna turn that off. So I wanna get the surface wet, and you can see the, uh, the definition of the, the, the gray and the red stones starting to come out there. It's kind of unique. You don't see pink stones very often. There's actually a little over here too. So I just want to sprinkle this on, get a good amount. You don't want too much. You don't want too little. That's fairly good right there. I'm going to start off with my large levigator. Move that over here, get a scrap stone. And I just want to clean this also. Make sure that there's no extra bits hanging onto that. If I were to need to file this down, I would take my file, a metal file, and put my fingers here and here to protect the surface and lightly go around anywhere at a pretty low angle. If I accidentally gouge this anywhere, then I'm gonna wanna you know, go through and make sure that it's cleaned up. So I just wanna remove some of that edge. And I wanna be careful with it. I don't wanna go at this too aggressively. If I go, if I, I don't want to start going like this, just small movements back and forth. I can see there's a little bit of a ding right there. Oh, yep. Let's see the little bits of dings in here where maybe this was filed too aggressively. So I'm going to try and open those up a little bit should be okay what could happen is some of that carborundum could get lodged in there and cause a little bit of a scrape but that should be good I could probably do that more but I don't want to spend all day doing it for the video here we go so I'm gonna you know I want to kind of have my legs shoulder width apart this is a pretty heavy levigator so I want to set it on the corner like that and then bring it into the image onto the stone so i'm going to start with one corner you can see the width of this is about three wide so i can do i need to think about what type of passes i'm going to do um, some stones are slightly bigger and i might need to change my my pathing um, usually i just kind of each stone might be different really large stones you know that's going to be different as well so I'm gonna probably go up, down, up, and then come across and across. So I'm gonna do three on this direction and two going this direction. Um, occasionally, because it's almost, I could almost get away with doing three, I'm probably gonna switch that up so every other time I do it, I'm gonna do three, one, two, so up, down, and then I'll do four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So I'll stagger it. I'll probably do three and two and four and three. So you might be able to see that. And that's with this levigator also. If I use the smaller levigator, that might change again as well. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of a boost this way and come across. And I'm keeping my eye on the center of the levigator. Yep, okay, so I, I'm changing my mind. So I didn't get that in the middle there. So I'm gonna do three on this side. So I'll do three and three, and then four, four, and three. So I'm gonna switch from, originally I said two. I wanna make sure that I'm overhanging the edge all the way around. 
But when you're first starting off, you know, that's gonna be difficult to do because you're gonna wanna stay more towards the center of the stone. The levigator could easily jump off of the stone until you get used to it. So there's my three. Yeah, so three is pretty good. So one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Now I'll show you another thing. Um, a lot of people when they're starting out, they're gonna be swinging this and muscling it a little bit more. You don't wanna do this, right? You don't, if your levigator is doing that, you're not doing it right. You want your hand to rotate around a center point. And remember, this needs more attention over on this side, so I'm gonna occasionally go back and forth here to bring that side down. Now 80 grit is more coarse, so it is harder to do. Um, it, you know, it takes a little bit more muscle power to, to do the, the 80 grit. Um, once you get to the, the smaller size grits, it becomes much easier. Um, I'm actually gonna take this off the stone and I'll show you how to do that. You're gonna get it to the edge again and bring it like that. So I would continue doing that, but I noticed while I was doing this that I was getting a few Nancy Kerrigan's on my plate, on my stone, which means um, I was getting a couple little bit of little scratches, and I'm worried that it might be because of those little bits that I saw in this bottom corner. So I'm gonna file that, this levigator down a little bit more before I continue with this stone. But what I would wanna do is continue using that 80 grit until I create a paste, until that creates a bit of a paste on here. And so I would have continued levigating for a few more minutes. And once that paste is there and it becomes pretty hard to do it, then I would remove the levigator, rinse it off. I wanna make sure I rinse it off completely, especially when I'm switching from 80 to 120 grit. Um, so I went ahead and I filed off most of that. There's still a little bit there, but I think uh, something might have happened to this. Maybe somebody dropped the levigator. Um, that's the only thing I could think of, or else they were using the edges of the file pretty aggressively and didn't realize it. Now, so, you know, these scratches, whenever you see these little Nancy Kerrigan's, Tanya Harding's, whatever, they look like the little uh, circular um, marks that you would see on an ice rink. Um, you wanna remove those before you move on to the next grit. So that happened with 80 grit. So I'm gonna have to continue using 80 grit until that is gone. And uh, sometimes if you have a deep one, you could be close to, to finished polishing your stone and you might have to go back and, uh, and to remove one of those marks if, if it's in a crucial area of your stone. So I went ahead and cleaned off the stone. I'm gonna add some more of this and I'm gonna show you how to use a a stone. I'm not really going to go through with this smaller levigator. It's m much easier for for people to 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 use when they're getting used to um, how heavy the the and how heavy it is, and also just the motion. So I would start with this one. Um, now this is a stone that's been used. Oftentimes you can use stone on stone to polish and you'll get actually two stones when you're done. Um, this is a pretty small stone. It is a gray stone. I, um, yep, that is a gray stone. And it's pretty small, it's a relatively small stone. Now to begin with, 
Once again, these edges are a little bit rough, so I would want to go through with my rasp. So my stone rasp. And bring these edges down a bit. Move this over. And I want the stone to be wet. Same thing, I'm using my fingers to protect the surface of the stone. I want to hit those edges, those corners. This smaller stone wants to move on me, so I'm going to butt it up against this one. Careful around the corners. Sometimes you'll meet a spot like that and you'll want to use the rounded edge. You know, some of those little spots like that, grit can be, can get lodged in there and uh, you won't know it if you don't clean it properly. So I'm going to go through and do the rest of this and, and I'll be right back. I am just coming back. It's actually been a couple days um, since uh, the earlier part of this video. And um, I'm coming back to this. I wanted to finish up graining this stone, or actually begin graining this stone, but you know, finish up talking about all the things that you need to know about graining a stone. And this is a. Uh, a stone that I had before. I'm going to grain this down uh, because I like this stone and use it again. And I wanted to show you how to do stone on stone graining. So I'm going to start with 80 grit on this one. Um, just, just to finish up any discussions about uh, the way that you would grain. You, you would start with the 80. You can see, you maybe you saw on this stone, there was some curly Q kind of scrapes into it. So they would have to continue doing this with the 80 grit until that is, to, or with whatever grit they're on right now until that's gone. But typically you do 80 grit for until the image is gone and your surface is corrected. Then you move to 120 grit and you do that three times. 180 grit, do that three times, and then 220 grit, and you do that three times. Um, this is gonna get started. Actually, I'll probably use this one on the bottom because it's a heavier stone. Typically, if you're doing stone on stone graining, you want these to be similar sizes and colors. So the density is similar and the color is similar. So we've got two yellow stones here. They're almost the same size, they're very close, and they should match very well for graining stone on stone. So I just wanna clear all the debris, any like little bits. I went around my stones and I, I beveled the edges down. A little sharp here still, but it's not bad. Um, I don't. I do not want to have a stone that has a sharp edge while I'm graining stone on stone. Starting with 80 grit, 
and you want to be very careful that you don't damage the stones when you when you put them down on each other you know when they kiss they want to you want to be very careful you can see that's pretty close a stone like this all I really need to do is move this around like that and because they are so similar in size I don't have to worry about a graining pattern or anything like that um, I have seen you can of course use a, a stone to grain on a stone like this but your pattern would be different you would want to do more of an elliptical pattern and move across and keep doing this elliptical pattern and then maybe come back in the other direction so instead of doing a snake like pattern you would do more like elliptical patterns throughout again making sure that you overlap the edges um, there's also a method where you can spin the stone which is okay let's see if we can do it here right so that's one way of doing it I'm probably because they're so similar in size I'm just gonna do this I think it'll actually uh, grain more accurately And I'm gonna keep going until I have a nice paste built up on the surface of my stone I want to make sure that my one of my hand is always able to catch and one of this my hands is always able to to push I don't want the stone to go off so I just want to be careful and I'm op holding opposite corners You can see that muddy carborundum paste is starting to form in between the stones. I find that once it gets to that point, it seems to, uh, the graining actually seems to go a lot faster. It seems like it works better when there is a paste in between the stones. And once it gets to a part where it's sticking a little bit more than you feel comfortable, that's when you're going to stop. If it wants to stick together too much and you don't feel like you can safely manage the stone anymore, that's when you're going to want to stop. And, oh, yeah, that was kind of rough there. Put this over. I want to be careful of the edges and let's see what we got so this stone of course didn't have any imagery on it so I'm just wiping this off I want to get any residual stuff that was underneath it This is looking pretty good. Uh, that's about what I expected. I did check these stones before, and actually, I just printed this one, so I know that it's uh, there's no wedge in it, there's no dip in the middle, and I don't really need to resurface this at all. You can see there's still imagery around here. And that's most likely because the center of this got the most attention and the outside was getting a little bit less. Um, this time around, 
maybe I'll try doing the spin method um, because I've been kind of enjoying doing that a little bit more, just practicing it. But uh, you can see actually this stone does have some mineral deposits in it. It looks like fissures, but if you look here, you can see some rust in there, and that means that there's some iron deposit in the stone. Uh, so it's kind of nice. It's kind of interesting. It's got a, a strange white line here as well. I'm not sure. I hope you can see that up close. But that's definitely some rust. So there's some iron mixed in with this limestone. Okay, so that's all. I'm going to continue doing this with the 80 until the image is totally gone. Switch to the 120 and keep going down to 220. And at the end, I will bevel my edges of the stone and just round them out nicely because uh, we don't want the stone to dry quickly along the sharp edges. And I'll be all set. So thank you.